Hey everybody, this is Gary with Earth and Time, and today I'm going to go up and check out what's left of the Bonnie and Clyde Bridge in Conroe, Texas, so about an hour north of downtown Houston. I got a number of responses from you all based on my video I did there on the history of that bridge, that that bridge has gotten washed out in the floods we had here in late January. So I'm going to go check that area out, see it, what's left of the bridge of anything, talk to you a little bit more about the history there, and let's get to it. All right, I've made it to the Bonnie and Clyde Bridge location along the San Jacinto River just west of Conroe, Texas. What I'm showing here is how high the San Jacinto River is right now. You can see where this is usually forest here and there used to be trails and pathways in fact when I did my other videos I actually did them from between these two pillars underneath this the train tracks here this train bridge and if I start panning to the left you'll see where I'm just I found a little sandbar and peninsula to stand along but what we can see here is what's left of the Bonnie and Clyde bridge coming down into the water and I'll see if I can walk over a little bit more so there we go so now you can see this part of the bridge actually used to extend onto the other side over there and has been totally washed out because of the floods we had here about a week and a half ago or about a week ago now in late January about a year ago I did a video on the Bonnie and Clyde bridge and actually I've done a couple videos one actually with my daughter my daughter had a channel that she was working on for a while and we came here and visited and I just reposted that information from that video and changed it up just a little bit Bonnie and Clyde used to come in this area and the question is well why would they come here well Clyde Barrow used to have relatives here in Conroe and in the 1930s it was said that he would come here and they'd park underneath this old bridge that's now been basically broken down or washed away at least on the eastern side of the bank and they would hide under here and he would go send messages to his cousin to come here and meet him. One thing I've learned living here is kin or your family members are very very important especially extended family and it's probably especially true back in the 1930s so Clyde Barrow coming here to visit a cousin wouldn't be an uncle wouldn't be too surprising because folks try to stay in contact with their kin now there are a lot of Barrows still in the area and also uh, south of here so I think that's a pretty prominent family name in this portion of Texas I moved just a little bit closer there's there's not a whole lot of places for me to get really up close to this bridge but I wanted to show where it's collapsed here on this eastern side which used to extend across to that bank over there now it's collapsed and fallen down into the river I'll be really curious to come back here and visit when the water recedes and I'm curious to see what the county is going to do with this or the city of Conroe is going to do with this bridge. From this vantage point, I'm going to go ahead and move my way hopefully around and see if I can work my way through all this thicket. You can get an idea about how thick the forest is here along this bank, which has actually helped stabilize this bank. The other bank doesn't look quite as stable over there because it doesn't have as much foliage until you get a little farther down the river. I'm just looking at the base of some of these trees and you can see how fast the water is still running. You would not want to be out there with this current. The San Jacinto goes all the way down to the Bay of Houston so that's where it ends up eventually draining into as we continue towards the southeast in that direction. All right, I got squirreled for a second again. You all know how I get squirreled all the time. I was just looking how cool this train bridge is coming across the river, and I'm glad it is okay. I have heard trains still go across this bridge, and you can see these big metal pylons they have here to help stabilize them across the river. Really, really cool looking bridge. Woo! As I come around on this side, you can really see the damage to the bridge. And you see how it's been twisted by those floods. A bridge that stood here since at least the 1930s, maybe even earlier than that. 
and you really get an idea about how powerful water can be in these floods. Look at that. Wow. Pretty sad, actually. It's amazing to see the force of nature, but it is sad when something like this bridge is destroyed by it. And speaking of the force of nature, check this out. If I look to the ground just adjacent to the bridge, you can see how all the grass and all these small trees that were trying to take root are all flowing in that same direction, have all been collapsed or pushed over. So you get a real idea about one, the direction of flow, and then two, the force of this, and probably how long it was going to keep these things bent over that they were never able to readjust and snap back up. And I'm probably all or pretty much dead at this point. I moved just underneath the west side of the bridge here, just so you can see me for scale. And you can see where the top of the, the bridge used to be. And it's not too much taller than me. It's probably sitting about seven, eight feet or so. But what you can see is the damage and the twisted metal that's behind me from the floods. Really interesting, again, to see the force of nature. Really sad to see what happened to this historic bridge. And here's another view of what this bridge looks like close up. And I'm standing underneath what would have been the western entrance along this bridge. And it would have gone straight across to the other side of the river. But now it's just a bunch of twisted metal that's fallen down into the river. And here's another view of that bridge and how you can see the eastern end is now well within that river. It's been twisted and the whole bridge has been destroyed. I was going to try to work my way over into the park here and look back, but it looks like there could be a power line that's down right here as well. So if anybody comes down here, just be very careful. This flood was pretty intense through here and you can see it dropped a lot of material in here, including what looks like maybe an old power line. Which as I zoom in, we can see it cutting across and up towards the park. As reference for anybody in the Houston area or traveling through Conroe, who wants to come take a look at what's left of this bridge for however long it's still going to be here. It sits just south of McDade Park. So you can actually park at McDade Park and walk underneath. Again, be very careful if you're doing it now because it looks like there's a down power line or some kind of line that's down. And I don't know what that is. So I wouldn't recommend going from that side right now. But when they get that cleared up or if you can find a way around it, you just come follow San Jacinto River going southbound just on the other side of this main bridge from McDade Park and you can find the Bonnie and Clyde Bridge here or what's left of it. I moved up the hill a ways so you can see I'm along this freeway so I'm going to apologize now for the road noise but this just gives you a different view of the bridge and how you can see it was twisted. So on the east side, it lost its pylons that we can see here on the west side that seem to, that are still intact, but the rest of it's all washed somewhere downriver. To give you an idea about how far up the flood came, you can see these are all still bent over. You can see all the mud through here and actually all the way up to the base of this bridge, there's actually debris and a line up here suggesting that the water came all the way up to this point. So you're looking at pretty significant depth here because it's probably, the water's probably 10 feet below, 12 feet below the bridge now, and it came all the way up underneath that bridge. This was a very significant flood that came through and down the San Jacinto River. In fact, you can see where somebody's fence line is here, property line, 
and now we're well away from the river I don't know if you can see it back there in the distance so we're a good I don't know 50 yards to 100 yards away from the river and somewhere in there and you can see all the debris that's caught on the fence from the flooding coming all the way up into this area in fact those pine trees there really mark the edge of what looks like where all the major flooding took place as i sit here along the san jacinto river and see it at its flood stage knowing that it knocked down the bonnie and clyde bridge here that's been standing for you know over 100 years by this point or around 100 years it reminds me of the fact that i've been here in the houston area for about 15 years and i've gone through multiple hurricanes i've even had a tornado in my neighborhood multiple rivers and creeks have flooded in fact water got all the way up to my garage at one point and as a Garrett and Earth and Time public service announcement, I would suggest all of you take the time to know what kind of disasters or natural disasters could occur in your area and just be aware of what those could be. Be prepared for them. Try to have an understanding if I'm close to a creek, where am I at in the floodplain? And there is information out there that you can find online. Uh, FEMA.gov, I believe, has a bunch of. Uh, flood maps for everywhere in the United States or er, almost every, everywhere I've looked in the United States that I've lived, I've seen FEMA flood maps. In fact, my poor real estate agent, when we first moved here, I'm sure she was amazing. I'm sure I wore her out because I asked for soil maps to find out what kind of soil our house was on. I asked for flood maps to know what kind of floodplain we were in. Were we in the 100 year floodplain, the 25 year floodplain, the 500 year floodplain? And I want to understand that so I can be prepared so if we have a major event, what's the likelihood I have to evacuate or I need to take some extra steps. So I hope all of you will take the time, especially after learning about this, this really puts in light what an event like this can do. Even though it's happened, obviously it's taken 100 years to wash this bridge away or along this creek, it can happen, it can happen to any of us. All right, with that being said, let's go back over, take one more look at the Bonnie and Clyde Bridge, what's left of it, and uh, close out this episode. Thank you all for joining me today. I really appreciate everybody who made the comments about what was happening with the bridge so I could come down here and capture it, maybe for the last time. Also, I hope everybody takes a look at what kind of natural disasters could be in their area and stay informed and aware of what could be happening there. I think that's something that this has really helped highlight for me again is the importance of thinking about well here's something that's been standing for almost 100 years and now this flooding event in 2024 has taken it out after all that time which tells me that a lot of these rivers and a lot of these areas are always prone to some significant weather event or natural disaster for those of you who are new to my channel please hit that subscribe button i appreciate your support Please like this video if you enjoyed it and you learned something out of it or got something new out of it that you didn't know before. I really appreciate that as well. And of course, leave comments down below. I try to respond to every single comment I get. I apologize if there's anybody who I've missed, but I try to take time out to do that as often as I can. I really appreciate each and every one of you. I love that you all join me for these adventures and I can share doing this with you. All right, with that being said, everybody take care, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next adventure.